I'm excited to learn more about Outlaws. And, you know, you wrote it, directed and star in it. And it's got um, historical characters and events, but at the same time, it's set in early 1900s. Talk to me a little bit about the story. It's, well, part of what I enjoy about this period, having done a Western before, is it's early America and it's just forming. And there's this, you know, when you take... Um, this melting pot and you take Chinese and Italians and Africans and, and, and Jews and, and all of us, and you put us in this pot and you stir it up, you get sparks for sure. But also you get great art. Mm -hmm. And if you think of those sparks in a way as causing steam in the pot, if you keep the lid pressed down, the pot's going to explode. But if you let that lid up and the steam can come out, then it can go on. And so you, you get this great sort of creative energy where out of America you get, you know, with African roots, you get, look at the music, gospel, hip hop, jazz, mm -hmm. R&B, country, rap, I mean, <laughs> rock and roll, you know, because you put us all in there and great things happen because we... We inspire each other, we imitate each other, we compete with each other, we grow with each other. And this is the melting pot of America. And it's there's no there's no better sort of creative environment to be in uh, for that. And I think that at that period, it's such an interesting period because you had sort of newly freed slaves going out west. You had, you know, this this sense of um, this ever expanding horizon, the ability to sort of the Protestant work ethic. If I can pull myself up by my bootstraps uh, and I can make anything of myself. And admittedly, some people didn't even have boots, but American <laughs> brothers and sisters who uh, showed us and taught us so much. And we're thankful for all they, they've done. And, and uh, so I thought it was such an interesting time in America um, to, to make a film that does, doesn't shy away from some of are more difficult stuff, but also acknowledges that there is no place like this country and the potentiality for uh, everything is just off the chain. And uh, so that's why I like that period. So uh, Outlaws is about a group of outlaws who discover that, you know, when, that by, by combining, by saying, you know what, we're not, you know, you think of some certain outlaws, Butch Cassidy, the Sundance Kid, well, they're all white, or the Rufus Buck gang, they're all black folks, or, you know, uh, and but rarely did you have outlaws who were of different races getting together and saying, well, in a raceocracy like this, we can actually get more done and be more efficient if people don't even realize that we're in this together at all. And so it's a group of outlaws of mixed race, all and some women too, who get in there and they make it happen. And they're kind of, in a way, there's a, there's a Robin Hood element to it. So they're not just outlaws. They're actually kind of rebels with a cause. And I won't tell you more than that <laughs> about that, but it's it's a fun, it's a romp through the West. There are real characters that you meet and they're played fairly real. Um, this is, you know, before healthcare, you know, people sweat, there's grit. and. Uh, but the movie has a bounce to it. It's got a pluck to it. It's got a humor to it. And uh, it's pretty fresh. So Kip, talk to me. I mean, you have assembled quite the cast of characters here um, to take on these, these you know, real life kind of historical characters and share some of that flavor. Um, talk to me about some of the people that are involved. Love to. Well, you've got a real mixed cast reflecting everything Mario just said, as well, a group of, in many cases, Hollywood icons also here reflecting what Mario just said, because they're here for Mario. And the continuation really of what I think is a, a Van Peebles franchise of philosophy, uh, which you see in this movie. And that's what attracted the cast. They knew they were going to be signing on to something that would be timeless, that probably be iconic. And when they read this script, they saw some great dialogue and, and scenes that are not only super fun to be in, but have a subtext and a vulnerability. So when Mario ran into his friend, Whoopi Goldberg, um, she said, hey, what are you doing? And he says, I've got this fantastic role of stagecoach Mary. 
And she says, well, wait a minute. I've been wanting to play Stagecoach Mary for, for as long as I can remember. He says, well, why don't you come and have fun with us? And so she plays Stagecoach Mary and she plays Stagecoach Mary in such a way as Mario intimated earlier that is authentic to the time. Um, we didn't Hollywoodize uh, the execution of that character. There is a wonderful character played by Edward James Olmos, um, who is a traitor in transition and reflecting the age of invention, which is 1908 right now. And when America is discovering that, why not? And why not me? And it's this gentleman making this transition when our group, both our protagonist and our antagonist, cross his path. Um, later uh, in the show, you get to spend time with Cedric the Entertainer, who's ho wearing every different kind of hat and all the patter and all the noise and all the sense that comes from someone like Cedric set in that period of time behind the master of, of Mario. We also got a stable of cast uh, that is our outlaws that rides with us uh, along these journeys, meeting not only those that I mentioned, but others along the way in the journey that Mario mentioned in what is really a father son story. Mm. Uh, so we have uh, Mario and his son Mandela playing in the very meta sense, father and son. And this is a family movie as well as an action film, as well as it's got Western elements because of where it's set, but it's, it's, it's a romp. We've been mm. watching Westerns for a year. We've been <laughs> studying the craft diligently for years. Z -z -z -z. And uh, Kurt Soderling put his big, gorgeous lenses around uh, Montana. And, and that is a character as well. I love that because I feel like um, as an audience member, and I, and I know for sure as talent, there, there's so much more when you can shoot on location and especially somewhere when we're talking about, you know, America and its roots to be able to shoot in Montana. Mario, talk to me about um, what that what that meant to be able to do that and kind of how it draws performances unlike you're able to get on a sound stage somewhere else. Yeah, it's interesting because some of it almost looks so gorgeous that it looks like it, it's CG. <laughs> it really is that beautiful. But we also shot in um, California too. So it's this is a big movie and that it covers a lot of expansion. We go from um, what we feel is Mexico up through Texas to Utah, all the way up to Montana. Of course, if you know your history, Stagecoach Mary ran a stagecoach line up through Montana. So we're actually shooting Montana for Montana. I always think that somehow uh, on some level, nature is God's art. And we were right in the middle of the painting, you know? And and the sunsets and the, the that we had with this magic hours were so beautiful that we would actually schedule specific scenes to get our, our bigger shots at magic hour so we could mm -hmm. capture some of that beauty um, that is Americana, you know, that's the American West. So you're gonna see some of the vistas that you, you probably got to know through Peck and Paw or um, even a, a touch of Leone. I mean, a little Leone spaghetti Western, you know. Um, but like Kip said, we really were watching a lot of Westerns and thinking about it. And we go to many different Western towns. So this is not one of those Westerns that stays in one town. This mm -hmm. thing really travels. And we all had to go to cowboy school. <laughs> and uh, so I already know how to ride. My mother had a Tennessee walker, but there were some folks that needed to get to cowboy school a little bit and <laughs> they, you know, it wasn't just like you could act in the movie and show up you had to learn how to ride and and then of course learn how to get zen with the horse that you're going to ride and and make that acquaintance because when what i'm when i'm in and i'm directing acting so when i'm in there and i call cut you got to be able to turn turn around and come back but that, that's communicating with you know, something that's a lot heavier than you are, man. Kip, you've been producing for you know more than 20 years now. And and the landscape has changed so much since we, you know, first seen film come out. It's changed so much with TV and streaming and COVID had a lot to do with that. But then just I mean, you know, thinking of new ways to adapt and and engage with audiences. And one of those ways is that like we can be invested, we can be part of your project. Um, I saw this through We Vivid. Tell me a little bit about like how I and our others could get involved. Thanks, Kelly. Appreciate that very much. Um, yes, uh, I think that the walls between filmmaker and film appreciator and audience are have come down dramatically, and that's great for everybody on both sides of what used to be a wall. Um, we Vid It has found a very clever way of 
bringing audiences closer to movies that they love um, in the process of them being made. And we provide that opportunity with Outlaws. Um, there's an opportunity to uh, be a participant in the film. And in exchange, we have not only revenue potential for you um, and some ownership in the film, but some access as we begin now in 2023 with the marketing campaign and a lot of fun stuff. Um, we've got the rollout of the film and the publicity surrounding the film, which not only can benefit somebody personally, but possibly their company as well. And we've got a lot of corporate sponsors and more and more coming on. The movie is distributed uh, worldwide by a first class distributor. So we're very proud of that. And we've been a studio based movie from the beginning. So it's a chance for independent people to be part of a studio type of a, of a release. In other words, you know, the movie's going to get out there and it's gonna be seen. And we have a very profile cast who is super supportive of the film. And not only would enjoy the collaboration of people out there, but you'll see these people out in front of the movie. So you know that if you're an investor, your money's going to work for you with our movie. Um, and uh, I'd say lastly, um, it's important with art, I think, to invest in things that make you feel good about yourself. Mm -hmm. and that make you feel that you're doing good things for others in the world that brings self-respect and when you see outlaws you'll feel this this movie was made from love this was born from two guys mario and i sitting in a room what about and wouldn't it be great if we took your attitude from new jack city and posse and all the things that we've learned as men over the last 40 years of being in this industry he and i separately um, and really put them to work in today's world and did something with which our kids and our and the world could be proud to have conversation and to feel that they were really a part of. So uh, join us. Um, we've had a lot of success in the past and we'd enjoy sharing it with you. The things that I, I'm excited to see about the film too, I feel like Mario, based on our conversation that we've had now, you know, are there aspects of, of what we will see that also mirror what's happening today? One of those great intangibles that where life imitates art, art imitates life. Oh yeah. <laughs> and the thing is this, what's, what's interesting, it's that's one thing to show an issue, but it's another thing to show a positive way to get over, get through and get past mm -hmm. an issue. And like any country, any, any young country, we've got challenges and things to get through. And, but we know that we're stronger united than we are divided. We know really that as Americans, we have more in commonalities, you know, and, and sort of common denominators than we do as differences. And so some of the fun is to, to enjoy our differences, you know, to see people in different, different cultures and different places bump heads a little bit and figure it out. But it's a beautiful thing when you see us figure it out and work it out. And, and uh, like I was expressing even earlier musically. And then the other aspect is, you know, the family aspect, you know, that when I did Posse, it was my father was there and, and he's passed. And, and this time it's, it's with my son. And there are things that we have to get past as father and son to really understand each other. Mark Twain had a great quote where he said, all my life, my father was an idiot. And at 21, he was a genius. Meaning that <laughs> when I turned 21, there were things that I understood that I didn't understand before. And it's not just me. Kip, Kip's son was on the set and our daughters were on the set and, you know, and, and our extended family and friends, not, on, not always just our biological family and friends. And I think that, you know, if you look at it, if you think about a baby, right, a baby sort of cries when it's hungry, it's wet, it's, it's tired, it's cranky. Uh, and that's what, what, what it feels. But as it grows, if it's unimpeded, it realizes, well, I can't really be happy if, you know, my mom or my family, my dad's unemployed, my, my mom's sick, then I, my happiness is now bigger. It's I've got to worry about the family. And then if it grows unimpeded, uh, it starts to say, well, now I've got to worry about um, my people. And so you start to care about the bigger picture and realize that the bigger picture, the all, the interconnectivity of all is all is, is very, is very important. I think you see that in Outlaws and that's the fun of it. It's not, it, you realize it's the us is a big us. It's a big us.